Hey, Sharu, what would you say the definition of callousness is? I'm glad you asked. Carelessness, not caring or troubling. Having no concern or failing to give sufficient attention to avoid harm and error. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> hey, how about some TV? <laughs> Welcome back to Where Are They Now? Our next guest is quite possibly one of the luckiest men alive. After simply buying a ticket at his local news agent last year, his life was changed forever. Please put your hands together for the winner of the biggest lottery jackpot ever, Kevin Goodwin. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So, Kevin, $100 million is nothing short of a miracle. I bet that amazing feeling is still there. A uh, year after your win. I guess it is. So what exactly does that enormous sum of money get you anyway? Well, I bought three new cars. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. What about your new houses? Of course. There's a main house, my beach house, and my holiday house in France. Wow, that's really impressive. What would you say that... Uh... Uh, of course, how could I forget? I'm fairly sure I've got that place in Sydney too. Okay, okay. So what would you say? But of course, whenever I'm in Sydney, I can't stay there. I absolutely have to be on my own. Is that all? <laughs> yes, please go <get> on. <laughs> what about these wild parties we keep hearing about on these? I mean, I wouldn't say they're wild. They're more of a get-together with close friends. So was it a get-together with friends and the police raided your house and people? To be honest, I really don't care. If I want to have a good time, I should, shouldn't, be ma shouldn't matter about how I choose to do so. Can we move on from this now? Of course, of course. Maybe you'll be more willing to talk about all the numerous traffic offences. Those have been in the news too, haven't they? Look, everyone seems to be under the impression that I'm not I'm a bad driver, and that may be so, but I'm still alive. And nothing's happened yet. I'm completely safe to be on the roads. A driver is only safe until he meets another bad driver. Even if anything was to happen, it wouldn't matter. My car gets smashed, I, get a new, I got a lot of money, I get a new car. I get hurt, I get the best medical treatment. But what if you hurt someone else? I can get on my way. Okay, let's move on. It seems there's a growing trend amongst millionaires to become philanthropists, or people who donate their money to its good causes. Are you thinking of doing something good like that with your money? Good. Like what? Well, the CEO here at our studios funded a family of refugees to come here and live a better life. You know, something like that. Did he? How horrible. Of course I'd never do such a thing. Really? Why not? Well, we're being submerged here in Australia by those people. We can't allow people like that to just stroll in and take what's ours. Besides, I've worked hard for this. Right. Kevin Goodwin, everybody. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for for tonight. I'll see you next week when we discover what happened to the man that fixed the 2008 Olympics. <laughs> Stay tuned for the ABC News. Welcome to Contemporary Issues. 
This is Shara Framan reporting from the ABC News headquarters in Sydney. Tonight, the three household chemicals are killing their children right now. The dull, bulging dad who refuses to acknowledge his troubled past as an ice cream salesman. And of course, our feature story, the tragic road accident that occurred today in Sydney. With Sydney being one of the most urbanized and highly advanced cities in Australia, one may think it has a good overall social infrastructure. Lamentably, this is not the case. The sense of carelessness apparently still looms over the city. Over the past years, especially since the start of this year, there has been an exponential increase in the rate of alcohol being consumed, use of recreational drugs such as ice and marijuana, and illegal supply of alcohol and drugs to minors. This, of course, leads to the Controversial Alcohol Restriction Act, which aimed to limit consumption, however, has proved to be a failure, only sparking a rise in, a, in illegal drinking. People participating in these careless and appalling activities are not only improver, impoverishing their own lives, but they are unjustly paying with the lives of innocent, hard-breaking Australians. It has been reported that the rate of domestic crimes within the city of Sydney has increased dramatically by approximately 5% since the start of the year, breaking the previous highest rate, 33%, back, back in the early 20th century. Furthermore, our city analyst, David Shore, has highlighted that the great western suburb of Sydney is a permanent source of these domestic crimes. The peculiar information would not be astonishing for the majority of us. Since the start of the year, the western suburb of Sydney have been densely populated by recent school and university graduates. These young, careless, and free men and women explore the perks of adulthood by dominating the extravagant nightlife of Western Sydney. However, their explanation has led to an increase, no, an increased number of illegal parties which have been responsible for motivating people to commit domestic crimes, including drunk driving, petty thefts, damaging public property, domestic violence, and inappropriate social behavior. Just today, there has been another drunken driving case reported in the western suburb of Sydney. Wait, sorry, the eastern suburb of Sydney. The initial report indicates that a young man, approximately in his mid-twenties, has been involved in a car accident. We have our news correspondent, Chris Simpson, with us from the side of the accident. How's everything looking around there, Chris? Well, not as bright as your pink suit, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, the accident has taken place at Elizabeth Park in Eastern Sydney. At the moment, the whole park is crowded with public officials, including police officers, medical personnel, and media officials. Unfortunately, this has been the first case of a car accident since the start of the year where the driver has died. This is terrible news. Can you describe the nature of the car accident? Well, by talking to various police officials, the accident took place at around 5.15 in the morning. That has been approximated by the medical coroner and a few eyewitnesses. The police also successfully identified the driver as a Mr. Kevin Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin was last seen at his party in the western suburb of Sydney. This has been confirmed by the majority of the people who attended this party, with many of them also mentioning that Mr. Goodwin left the party at around 3 in the morning and did not return afterwards. There is not much known about the car accident yet, but it seems like Mr. Goodwin was driving drunk carelessly through the freeway that connects western and eastern suburbs of Sydney. The police are further looking into CCTV cameras to confirm this. That's all I have from here. Back to you, Cheryl. Thank you, Chris. Mr. Goodwin, as we know, has been charged multiple times previously for drunk driving. This has been argued for almost a year now, beginning around the time when he famously won $100 million from the lottery. It is unfortunate that the passage of time has not altered our ancestral ideology. We are still living in a bubble of carelessness. We smash up things and creatures, and then retreat back into our belt of our vast carelessness. We make mistakes at every point of our life and leave behind a long trail of ma mess for others to clean up. Sometimes it feels like the roaring 20s still on the sunrise of the modern day, preventing us from escaping our bubble of carelessness. <laughs> This is Shara Farhan, and you're watching Contemporary Issues. We'll be back after a short break.
Kevin was a friend to all of us, wasn't he? His sudden and truly tragic death will all of us unfortunately overshadow the great life he led. Yes, great life. Excuse you, he was a truly wonderful man. If you know him like I did, then you... No, excuse you. I was his brother. I would know him. Even if it has been two years since we last spoke. Besides, being a wonderful man and saving did it. It was an accident. It wasn't like he meant to kill himself or... This isn't about that. This is about celebrating life and coming to terms with the passing of a friend, isn't it? I guess. Okay, so Kevin was a friend to all of us. And his passing was tragic to say the least. It is incredibly unfortunate that he was robbed of the opportunity to have a loving family of his own so soon. But the future will go on without him. And if he celebrate life instead of mourning loss of such a... You're avoiding it. Avoiding what? You don't want to talk about it. You know it will expose him as he truly was. Don't you dare say it! You see, ladies and gentlemen, my friend here is under the impression that Kevin was actually a decent human being. Don't! Face it, he was nothing but a careless fool. You're purposefully avoiding the fact that he was responsible for his own death. If he hadn't been so, so stupid, he'd still be alive. Oh, you said it. We shouldn't speak ill of the dead. It's just not right. See? You can't even deny it. Facts are facts. It doesn't matter about how fast he was driving. It doesn't matter about how much he had to drink. And it doesn't matter what is it, whether he was wearing a seatbelt or not. What really matters is that he was a good man. He threw his life away. You've written nothing but sympathetic lies in this eulogy. Please. Please. I can do that. As Victor Hugo once said, short as life is, we make it even shorter by being careless. Kevin was one of those men with a particularly short life. Having lived a vague existence until rather recently, I myself believed Kevin to be quite a reasonable person. Then came the money. The fortunate win of the lottery brought Kevin into a deluded phase of pure excess. Expensive cars, parties, alcohol. And did he ever think of his dear brother? Of course not. I tried to bring it up. I tried to warn him. But dear Kevin was having none of it. He smashed things up between us and retreated back into his mind. And that's the last I saw of my brother. As you may have seen on the news, he was instantly killed when his alcohol-fueled escapade on the highway sent him on a collision course with a large tree. Where did he come from? A huge part of it. Why did he put himself in such danger by driving? because he simply did not care. In the end, Kevin was not a wonderful man. Or what titles we make up. In the end, he was rich, drunk, and careless. And now he's dead.